Wide Bay Region farmers are driving innovation in dealing with the challenges of climate variability and they are using a range of cutting edge tools to drive productivity and profitability for their farms. As one of the largest fruit and vegetable producing areas of the country, Bundaberg farmers are using a range of options to deal with drought, flood and other setbacks. But with a variable salad bowl of crops, the management approaches are unique to each farm. Well, it's gone from uh, it's gone with forward-thinking growers. Commodity lines were the basis of this region at the start, but now we've found a diversity and with using variety, variety changes and variable changes, and uh, using low-till uh, products like in different fruit lines, it's allowed us to use uh, the region for the full 12 months of the year and diversify in crops and. Uh, as you know, without diversification, uh, most commodity lines, if you're stuck on one line and haven't got that, that uh, diversity, you actually suffer in the market. Um, but we have gone through drought where our water, water level and water management were decreased. Uh, we're down to 25% at one stage. Um, that hasn't happened since the last two floods. Um, but obviously the drought will affect our production. Uh, it affects your management decisions on how much you grow. How, and, actually how much you yield, so you'll only push certain crops for so many weeks instead of going your full, full span. But all different crops, all different uh, management systems. He says the region is preparing itself for even tougher climatic challenges. The research in the last 10 years has uh, proved that we're one and a half degrees hotter uh, for 2015. So that's a real concern and looking at the way that's going to escalate over the next five to ten years is obviously going to be part of your strategy. Models at the moment show we're going to be three and a half degrees by uh, 2020 so how we end up and how we adapt to that is, is going to be, take a lot of management. Central Queensland University researcher Phil Brown says that adaptations aren't just on the farm but also within markets. Adapting and fitting into the environment that they're, they're working in and so I'll see that there's going to be no difference um, for that in the future. I think one of the really interesting ones for farmers um, nowadays is that they need to adapt not just to the changes in uh, the climate will, will influence production, um, but for, for a lot of growers now it's that access to market and the, 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 um, the post-farm gate parts of the business that uh, you wouldn't automatically assume are going to be impacted by climate. Um, but there'll probably be a lot of changes that farmers um, will be able to, uh, or will need to respond to, that some may be opportunities, uh, access new markets or, or be able to be more competitive market, in markets if, if other producers um, are, are more severely impacted. Um, well, I think most, uh, most farmers now, and perhaps always have been, are, are businessmen, they? they're generally quite astute. If you're still in the farming game, you, know, you, you probably know your business pretty well. And so that business is not just growing stuff, you've got to be able to sell it. So I think climate change um, is one of those areas where growers have started to think about the changes that you, you might expect for the production part of the business, but that's not a lot of thought has gone on to the impacts that climate change might have on the rest of the chain and how, how they can take advantage of opportunities that rise from it. In the cane industry, the region is looking at increasing its water use efficiency through new technologies such as lateral irrigators. But this brings its own challenges, both with the capital investment cost and the ongoing running costs. Yeah, well it does lower your cost um, and your labour cost, but it's the capital component of uh, the infrastructure to put it on. Um, it's, um, it's a burden, and depending on the farming operation, whether it's suitable or not. There is some people putting them on. So. We basically grew a crop under full irrigation last year, yes, which is unsustainable. I spent in the vicinity of uh, between uh, $10 and $11 a tonne just on power alone. Yeah, no, I've never seen it as bad for costs. Phil Brown says that no matter what the industry, there will be opportunities in the future for innovative growers. Uh, so uh, there's perhaps an opportunity for farmers to be a little bit proactive and think about what, what's, what's the marketplace going to look like in 
10 years, 20 years time if the, the climate change predictions come about? And could we be some of the first to invest in some changes that will position us so that um, we'll get a get a head start on anyone else if, if, if and when those changes take place? Um, uh, if we had more extreme climatic events, um, heavy rainfall events, um, potentially some of the low cost protective um, cropping structures, which will protect the crop a little bit from um, the, the damage from, from rainfall or from wind, uh, some of those systems uh, might give you a bit of an edge over other, other growers. It takes a little while to, I guess, to invest in it and then to get, get used to growing your crops in a slightly different way in a new system. So um, farmers that, that might want to you know, get ahead of the game and, and are, are willing to take risks could invest in, in some changes to their production practices to position themselves for what may occur in the future.